Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. I was warned we were going to have a small group today because it's, there's a lot of activities going on. Um, so thank you, everybody that's here, for uh, being here. It's good to see everybody. Um, as spring has sprung and the weather gets nicer, uh, more people are out camping, more people are traveling. So uh, uh, it's understandable because we're all tired of, well, I'm tired of winter. So uh, uh, thank you, Lord, for blessing us with the weather that we have here in New Mexico. Um, I would like to uh, ask uh, Paul and, uh, and Jill, if she would like, uh, to come forward and they're going to give us an announcement on uh, one of the activities that they're uh, interested in uh, promoting. Good morning, everyone. So I just wanted to let everybody know on June 2nd, we're going to host a golf tournament for uh, the Fellowship Hall. So the proceeds will go to help pay off the Fellowship Hall. And Jill and I could definitely use some help on finding um, sponsorships, on promoting the golf tournament. If you know golfers, you know, please get them out. We could also use a few volunteers that day just to round people up and coordinate things. But the main thing I really wanted to make sure that people realize is there are all levels of sponsorship. So there's all the way from just an individual sponsor where you can get a whole basically your name on a sign we'll put it on the hole and you know it's uh, we are doing that for two hundred dollars and then all the way up to basically however much you feel you would like to uh, donate but I don't know a lot of the folks in the, the Adventist community and it would be great if people can even provide me names of uh, potential businesses and sponsors and I would love to get any ideas and thoughts and help so if folks can you know reach out through pastor mike he's got all my contact info or you guys can just catch me and say you'd like to help i'd love to um, make contacts so thank you guys thank you paul on the bulletin, you can go down and you can see the shell Fellowship Hall mortgage. Previous balance was 2,071,693. The current balance is 267,753. That number is dropping, so that's a good sign. But the sooner we can clear that debt, the sooner we can grow and maybe do more to, to additions and make this uh, a a church that people will will want to come and join us because they're seeing such wonderful things happening here in Corrales. So um, with that, I, I'd like to uh, go ahead and, and uh, let's bow our heads in a, in a quick prayer so we can continue our service. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for everybody's attendance. Thank you for the volunteers that help to present the, our service here. Please be with Pastor Mike as he presents the lesson today. Um, let us take what we learn here and apply it in our lives so that we can help grow your kingdom here on earth. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. All right, the weather is good. There is fellowship here in the house of the Lord. We get to worship Him, so we have every reason to be able to celebrate and worship His name today. And so we thank you for joining us here at the Seventh Day Adventist Church as we are setting up here for 
our music. We invite you, maybe you may not know all the songs, but the words will be up on the screen, and we just invite all of you to join us and sing your hearts out for the Lord. The first song we are going to be singing is called, How Great Is Our God.
Holy Night Church. And now I invite you to stand with us as we sing our opening song. Let's stand and sing the heart of worship.
morning, friends. So I had a really good start of the day, and I forgot it at school on Friday. So I had to pray right now really, really hard, and God put another one in my mind. So I'm going to share something with you guys. So how many of you guys ever had a bad day? I had a bad day this week. I sometimes have a lot of bad days, right? Have you guys, do you guys only ever just have one bad day? Just one bad day? Oh, I was like, man, you're lucky. So this week, I was doing something good, and while I was doing something good for someone else, I got a flat tire. And it was so scary because I was all by myself, and my kids were with me, and I was driving, and the car starts telling me, your tire is low, your tire is low, and it's beeping, and beep, 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 beep. Oh my goodness, and we're on the road, and I thought, what am I going to do? And we pulled over, and I look, and I didn't see anything. I go, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And the tow truck always takes a long time, and I don't have a spare tire, and all of, and I was just thinking of all of the bad things that are happening to me, and I had a bad day at work, and the kids weren't listening, and you know, I'm just thinking of all the bad things that are going on in my day. And then I got back in the car and I kept driving. I said, maybe I can make it to the gas station. And if I make it to the gas station, then I can put air in my tire and I'll be okay. So I keep going, I keep driving, and all of a sudden, now it's really blaring. Beep, 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 beep. And my pressure is dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping until it was at five. Now, do you know where the pressure is supposed to be? It's supposed to be at 40. And I was at five. Is that good or bad? That's bad. And my kids are crying, and they're scared, and I'm scared, and I don't know what I'm going to do, and I'm all by myself. And then what do you think I should have done? What do you do when you need help? Ask someone. Yes, you ask someone. And if no one is around, who can we ask? Your parents. Yes. And when your parents are not around, who can we ask? Oh, I heard it. Jesus. That's right. So I stopped and I prayed and I said, you know, Jesus, I need strength right now. And I need so much strength and I need so much patience and I need calm. I just need calm. Does your teacher ever tell you that to take a deep breath? Oh my goodness. Your mom tells you, your mom is a smart woman. So I took a deep breath, and I said, I need to think of the positives. Well, I called AAA, and usually when AAA comes, they take two hours to come and pick me up. And this day, they took 20 minutes. Holy moly, holy, 20 minutes? They actually could drop me off at Costco to get my tire fixed. A new tire usually costs $400. You know how much a new tire cost me this day? A hundred. A hundred is still a lot of money, but was it the 400 I thought I had to pay? No. There is this song. I don't know if you guys have heard it. It's my favorite song. Samuel knows. Counting my blessings. A lot of times when we are going through bad, through a bad day, there's just so many bad things, and if you're not careful, your whole mind is consumed with all of the bad things happening. But when that happens to me, what I try to do is I try to stop, take a deep breath after I pray, and I try to think of all of the blessings that Jesus has given me. I was safe. I was in the rally. I was able to pull on the side of the road. My kids were safe. AAA came right away. I didn't have to spend a lot of money. And I was able to get home, and we still got to eat dinner and go to bed. So even though it was a really, really, really bad day, Jesus still was giving me so many blessings. But if I, but, but it's our choice if we want to look for the blessings or if we want to um, be consumed by, um, uh, be overwhelmed by just all of the bad things that are happening. So we have to make a choice. Can you guys make that choice with me? That we want to look for Jesus' blessings. Because they're all around us. Every day, even today, I 
woke up and I'm having a very bad day. And I thought, you know what? Can you guys help me think of some blessings for today already? Tell me one blessing, Liana. Tell me a blessing for the Sabbath day today. Um, being nice to people. So many people have been nice to me today. That's right. That's a blessing. Jesus is giving kindness to us through other people, right? Yeah. What's another blessing for today? I did. I ate three breakfasts today. I am so thankful. My belly is nice and full. You are right. That is another blessing. Is there any other blessing that we have today? All of the people are at church today. That is a blessing because I love people. You're right, Dobby. Are there any other blessings you guys could think of? When I'm helpful, then I you feel better, right? And then I am a blessing to others. That's right. Liana, did you have another one? Caring about people. That's right. Just like Mariah said, too, where we can care for others and we can be a blessing. You know what is another one I was thankful for? The sun. We had really great days leading up to this week. And I don't like the windy days. But today is beautiful. I hope that my kids can be a blessing to me and we can go to the park today because I like to spend time with my family. So I want you guys to try to remember to look for Jesus' blessings in your day. Can you guys do that? Does someone want to pray for me? Oh, Liana. Oh, let me come closer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this road and, and how Help me and Mrs. Zone to do good choices. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I overlooked an announcement. I... Uh, I want to remind everybody that the men's ministry is having a isotope game tomorrow. So those of you who have gotten tickets already, um, keep that in mind. And if anybody decides they want to go, uh, Don Kamen would be the person to contact. If you need his number, you can see me after church. And uh, you can call to see if there's any tickets available. Now it's time for our tithes and offerings. Uh, for those who were in the auditorium when we started, you saw the video uh, playing about the Hope Channel International. Well, that's going to be the, uh, the uh, tithe and offerings portion today, although I love this church because they give us the latitude to direct our money where, it, where we want it to go. So if you want to pay towards the mortgage on the fellowship hall in the envelopes, just notate where you want your money to go, and uh, that way we can we can feel like we have a vested interest in different ministries that we want to support. So please keep that in mind. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity now to give back what is yours. Everything that we have is a blessing from you. Thank you for the opportunity to give back so that we can help grow your kingdom, we can be good stewards, and we can uh, show the world what an awesome God you really are. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
And then we turn our eyes on you. Lord, we need your help. There are people in our congregation who are hurting, who are grieving, who may need financial assistance, who may need an intervention, Lord, a miracle in their life. Maybe they don't have the best health. But Lord, we lay them at your feet today. And as we sang earlier, we come to the altar. Dear God, we ask for people who come here today, Lord, that you may bless us, that you will take care of us, that you will give us the guidance that we need. And Lord, if we are coming to the last days, we know that the devil is on the prowl, on the attack. So we ask, Lord, for a hedge of protection around us. We also ask, Lord, that you be with our children, our youth, that you keep them safe at all times. Lord, we pray for those who could not be here today for whatever reason. They are also part of our family, and we lift them up to you in prayer. And Lord, as we transition to the study of your word, we pray that you will speak to us, come to life, and may your spirit, Lord, be our guide always. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath to all of you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Okay. To the online audience, we thank you for joining us as well. If you guys want to share this uh, church service later on, feel free to do so. But anyways, I wanted to talk to you guys today. You saw the sermon title. We're going to be talking about the eclipse, or I'll be briefly mentioning it. But actually, what I, what I want to talk about today is as we look outside, as we look at society, what's going on, is it pretty evident that Jesus is coming soon? What do you guys think? Is that something that we just preach about? Is that something that you hear over and over again that you become callous to? Or you think that as we see what's happening in the world around us, it is a reminder that we need to get our act together. It is a reminder that maybe we have family and friends that we need to be praying for. Or maybe it's a reminder that maybe in our own lives, there's things that we still need to get together. And maybe we need to have some one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. And maybe we need to spend some time getting to know Him and developing that relationship. So we're going to explore that in a little bit, but this week something happened. Is it on Monday? Yes, on Monday. How many of you actually got to see the eclipse? Raise your hand. Okay, so about half of you. How many of you, you really didn't care knowing that you're gonna see another one in your lifetime in just a few years? Okay, so we have some takers as well. How many of you saw the last one? Okay, a lot more hands, okay? So here in New Mexico, we didn't exactly have the best view if you wanted totality. Some of you guys were in Texas, and that's where you can get some of the, the best view. So I didn't want you all to feel like you missed out. So we're going to create a brief eclipse here in the church, okay? Now, I was told that there are some cultures that may be offended, you know, when you see an eclipse. So I'm giving you a heads up right now, but I, I can have maybe Samuel or Austin, one of you guys, come on up. We're going to create a brief eclipse, okay? All right. I actually didn't practice this ahead of time. Samuel has no idea what we're doing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you guys. Can everyone see this? Okay, maybe we need to lower the lights a little bit. Okay, hold this up, Samuel. All right, this is my flashlight on my phone. This is what we would call the sun. Now the sun produces light. Are you with me? Okay? Now, those of you who know how eclipses work, don't say anything. Maybe there's some people here who have not taken a science class yet. But anyway, hold it up. You got to hold it up. Okay? So the sun is shining, and this is what we call the moon. Okay? So what is the moon going to do? The moon is going to come and cover the sun. And when the moon covers the sun, even if it's during the day, even if it's at noon, and you're in the right place at the right time, there will be total darkness, right? So we're going to do this, and we're going to cover this, all right? Can you still see the sun? Okay, now depending on what angle you are, you're going to get different views. That's why not everybody got totality. But the sun still exists, okay? The only thing that happened is that the moon covered it. And when the moon does that, you have this effect. Well, even if it's during the day, it's actually being covered up. Now, here in New Mexico, I took a picture. It didn't seem like it made a difference, okay? Oh, you know what it is? It's because I'm not wearing my special glasses. Okay, hold on. 
So one of the things that they tell us is that you should not stare at the sun during the eclipse because what would happen? You won't go blind, but your eyes will be damaged, right? So as you're looking at the sun and you're putting the, the moon over it, I can't see, okay, all right, there we go. Then you have a better viewing of what the eclipse was like. Now some of you were able to see this, some of you you're just gonna have to look at pictures, okay? But this is a brief science lesson, we can turn the lights back off, of how eclipses work. Now the reason I am sharing this with you is because I like science. And maybe some of you, that was your favorite topic in school. Maybe for some of you, science was not. Maybe it was math. Maybe some of you like history. What's beautiful about the Bible is the Bible covers all of those things. You'll find science. You'll find history. You'll find love stories in the Bible. And all kinds of things that Jesus wants us to learn. Now one thing I noticed, as the eclipse was approaching, a lot of people, not a lot, maybe some people, were spreading conspiracy theories. You guys know what conspiracy theories are? Things that they think will happen, and they will use proof for it. And nowadays, it's easy to make a video and put it on YouTube, right? Maybe some of you have done this. And then everyone thinks because you put a video up that now all of a sudden you are an expert. So my dear church members, I want to tell you guys, let's be careful. Let us, before we're so trigger happy to hit that share button or like button, let's make sure that we are fact checking the facts before we share anything. Because guess what? What you share can do great damage or can also be a great blessing to people. Now some of the things that I was seeing is that something was going to happen during the eclipse. Now I'm preaching this after, I didn't preach it last week because we had communion. But are we still here? Yes. Are we still alive? Yes. Has Jesus come and taken us to heaven? No. no. So what happened? So either some of those facts were off, or something did happen and we just don't know what it is, or we just need to re-examine and see what is it that God wants us to really be preparing for. And so that's what I want to remind us today. I know some of us, we, we read something or we watch a video and we're eager to share it, and that's great. But let's make sure we know what we're sharing before we actually share. And I also want to add that some of us, we like to fall in love with certain preachers or pastors. And we watch their videos, we listen to their podcasts. That's great. But if we only listen to one kind of preaching, what happens? We become a disciple of that preacher. We become a disciple of that church. And so I want to encourage you guys to, number one, read widely but also listen to more than one person. So if you come in here today and the first time you're opening your Bible or the first biblical message you're hearing is today right now from me, I don't want you to become a disciple of me. Who do I want you to become? A disciple of Jesus. And that's why I want to encourage us to, to read widely. Okay? Now why do you guys think people spread or fall prone to conspiracy theories? Anyone want to take a guess? All right? According to the American Psychological Association, the reason why people tend to fall or spread conspiracy theories is actually not necessarily because they want control or because they have strong distrust, but it's actually based on your personality type. Did you know that? No. So depending on what personality you are, some of you guys are gonna be more prone to believing things and sharing it with others. And there are some of you guys who are gonna be more skeptical and say, well, you know what? Let me make sure I have all the facts right today before I believe that. Wow. And in Matthew 24, Jesus actually says that he wants us to know the facts. Did you know that? No. He wants us to make sure we are prepared. So for our first verse today, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. That's what we're gonna look at today. So. I would say actually 99% of the verses what, that we're going to look at is going to be found in Matthew today. So we're going to spend a good bit of time. So when you get there, say amen. amen. Matthew 24. And I, I realize everyone has different versions. Uh, sometimes we have some Bibles in the pews. You have the app on your phone also. So I invite you to join me. Let's all go there. Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to start in verse 4. So once I know that you're there, you're going to say amen. If anyone needs more time, say mercy. 
Uh, and we're more advanced in mercy. Matthew 24, verse 4. Who is speaking here? Jesus. Jesus. Do we need to pay particular attention? Yes. Of course, it's Jesus. Even if it was a different person or another disciple, we should still pay attention. But here we know it's Jesus himself. He says, Take heed that no one deceives you. Matthew 24, 4. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive just a few people, right? What's it saying? It will deceive how many? Everyone? No, not quite. But it says many will be deceived. And so today, I don't want you guys to fall into the category where you are deceived. I want you to fall into the category where you know what's happening and you are prepared. I remember a few years ago, I believe it was in 2011, and there was a movie that came out. It was called 2012. <laughs> so I saw it in 2011. The movie was called 2012, and it was based, the movie was based on a Mayan calendar prophecy. So you probably remember this, that the world was coming to an end. What year? 2012. What year are we in? 2024. Did the world come to an end? Obviously not because you're still here. But I remember seeing this, and as I was watching this, I started getting uh, a panic attack. Because in my mind, I forgot that what was on the screen was not real. And, and I had to step out and, and catch my breath. I was getting dizzy. I thought I was going to pass out. And I realized, you know what? I'm having a panic attack. Because I took what was a minor prophecy that they turned into a movie, and I thought it was real. And I was... You could even say deceive just for a moment, and then I told myself, get a grip on yourself. You know what's going to happen in the last days. And I said, you know what? All right. And then I went back and finished the movie. <laughs> but anyways, Jesus does not want us to be deceived. And so in Matthew 24, we're going to look at different things that Jesus has done to prepare us for the last days. But I think a good um, rule of thumb if you forget anything that I've talked about today, a good rule of thumb is what we're going to look at today. So let's go to Matthew 24. Let's go to verse 37. Matthew chapter 24. We're going to look at verse 37. Did we switch speaker here? Who's still speaking? Jesus. So he's giving us advice, warnings of what's going to happen. So Matthew 24, verse 37. He says, but as in the days of who? Noah. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Now, do you guys think Noah was a real person? Did the flood happen? It's funny because I, I fly a lot, and on one of these seats, um, one of these trips that I was on, I was sitting next to someone in my flight. Sometimes you don't get to choose who you sit with, right? You can choose where you're going to sit, but who's going to sit with you? You don't know. It's like a, a Russian roulette. But anyway, this guy sits next to me. And I was reading, I don't remember, it was a religious book. And he said, you know what? Do you actually believe the story of Jonah? I was like, yes. He's like, do you actually believe the story of Adam and Eve? Yes. Do you actually believe the story of Noah? And I said, yeah. He's like, all of that is just fairy tales and fiction. I said, I'm sorry that you believe that. I said, but you have to take a look at the Bible, it proves itself that it's a book that's for real. This is God's word. It's like, ah, whatever. And then, you know, that opportunity closed. But then it got me thinking that maybe there are some people here who doubt that some of these stories existed. So real quickly, here's some evidence that the flood and Noah actually happened, all right? One of them is the geological evidence. How many of you have ever been to the Grand Canyon? All right, about half of you. Those of you who are not the summer will be a good time to check it out. But if you were to go to the Grand Canyon, you will notice that there are some fossils or bones that are near the top layer instead of the bottom layer. And some of those bones belong to animals or creatures that swam where? In the ocean. So the question would be, how did those end up so high up? Okay. And so I'm not a geologist, but to me that would be one factor that would show that maybe, just maybe, there was a flood that covered the whole world. Another evidence that the flood existed is that if you look at other cultures and other religions, a lot of them also have a story 
about a worldwide flood. Did you know that? Maybe some of you are coming from another culture, another religion. Everyone has a version of a flood that really happened. So it almost seems like there was a lot of witnesses, even though we weren't really there, but everyone has a story to tell. So it's just like, for example, if somebody was a target and they got in a car accident, all right? The more witnesses you have, the better it would be, right? If only two or three people saw it, some people could make up what happened if that story really was what happened. But the more people that saw, maybe we can go to the store and check out the cameras, they got footage of it, okay? But the more witnesses there are, then that's more proof that what happened really happened. And then the third evidence that I'll throw out to you today, and there's many more, is that Jesus himself talks about Noah as if he were a real person, right? Let's read that verse one more time. For as in the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So this shows me that if Jesus believes that he's coming soon, okay, then he must believe that Noah was a real person and Noah existed. And I realize I may be speaking to the choir here right now. But this shows us that Jesus wants us to be prepared in the last days. Let's go to verse 38. It says, For as in the days before the flood, they were, what were they doing? Eating. What else? Drinking. Is anything wrong with eating? No. Is anything wrong with drinking? <laughs> Depends on what you're drinking, right? Water. All right, pop. Okay, horchata. We're good. All right? What else? In addition to eating and drinking, what else were they doing? Drink something else. Marrying. Is anything wrong with marrying? No. Okay, I thought someone would say it depends. All right? And giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, verse 39, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. And then verse 40, it says, then two men will be on the field. One will be taken and the other left, verse 41. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Now some people have used this to build uh, entire the theology or even movies. Some of you heard the Left Behind series, okay? This is not talking about one person will be raptured to heaven and the other person will be left behind. If you look at the context of this, there's different context, but the one that Jesus is pointing out is not that second coming, there's gonna be two groups of people. One will be ready for his coming, and the other group will not be ready for his coming. So the question is, which group are you in? And then he continues on in verse 42. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Do we know when Jesus is coming soon? What day? We don't. But what's cool about Jesus is that he's given us signs to help us prepare. Right? I remember growing up, my parents would say, you guys need to do your chores. You need to do this, this, and this, and this. Okay. And then they would go wherever. But as we're looking at the clock, oh, man, they've been gone. Our, you know, my brother and I would say, our parents have been gone for about two hours. They should be coming soon. Maybe we should start cleaning our room. Maybe we should start vacuuming the living room. Maybe we should start washing the dishes because it's any minute now that they're gonna be here. Now we have choices to make at that moment. We can do those things so that by the time our parents come home, we've done all our chores, we're ready, everyone is in a good mood. But there's also the other option, right? As in the days of Noah, people were really doubting. Yes, they were doing what they were supposed to do, but they were not ready. So we could have chosen, you know what, we're gonna play on our PlayStation. And then what happens? We hear the garage door opening, oh shoot, and then in the next 30 seconds, we clean our room, wash the dishes, vacuum the floor, and when they come, everyone is happy, right? But yet, that's how we try to live our life. There's some of us here who think that at the very last moment, when we see the cloud, then we're gonna get our life together. But the Bible says, no man knows the day or the hour. And so what does that mean for us? It means that we 
must be ready when? All the time. All the time. And so my question, church, is are we in that process of getting our life together? Is there someone that we need to invite to church today? And I've heard some people say, well, you know what? My life is not all put together. But let me make sure I'm perfect, and then I will come to church. Is that the order that Jesus wants us to do things? That we have to be perfect, and then we can come here. You guys have heard that the church is a hospital for what? Sinners. For sinners. Is that true, or is that something that we just say? See, sometimes people will come to church and they don't feel welcome. Maybe the pastor said something. Maybe another church member said something that offended. And those are things that we need to work on because the church needs to be able to be a safe place. And it starts with us, right? We're also sinners. We're also imperfect. That's why we're at church, because we all need Jesus as well. And so that is my prayer today, that we'll be able to take a look at ourselves and realize, you know what, I am not perfect either. We're all in the same boat. We all need Jesus in our lives. And so this is one of the warnings that Jesus gave his disciples. And his disciples, what's beautiful about this, is that when Jesus went to heaven, the disciples took these things to heart. And in the book of Acts, you see that there is a sense of urgency in everything that they did. Why? Because they believed that Jesus would come in their lifetime. Even Paul in Thessalonians, he says that we who are still alive, right, will meet the Lord in the air. What does that tell you? That Paul thought that Jesus was going to come in his lifetime. Now, do you guys think that Jesus is going to come in our lifetime? Do you believe that you'll still be alive when Jesus comes? Yeah. I see some of you guys nodding your head. And you know what? You very well might be. But if something were to happen to you on your way home, or maybe you get a sickness that you don't recover from, at the end of the day, we still need to be ready. And so, friends, I want to remind you that when we live life, we need to have a sense of urgency as if Jesus was coming not tomorrow, not in five years, not in ten years, but as if Jesus were coming today. So my question is, how is your life? How is your relationship with him? I want to show you guys, if we can start getting the trailer ready. Next week, there is a movie coming out. I don't know if you guys knew this. There's a movie coming out in the movie theaters. It's called The Hopeful. And it's produced by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it's the life of, well, Ellen White, Joseph White, some of our founders, and how they were studying the Bible, and they realized that Jesus was coming soon, and they believed that it would be in their lifetime. And they had a sense of urgency, and they were spreading God's word. And I want you guys to catch that fire as well. And so we're going to play the trailer. It's, it's almost two minutes long. And then I'll talk about it afterwards. So let's go ahead and play. Obey his word and believe. There is no time to delay. I believe the Bible is clear. Jesus will return before George is here. I come before you today to tell you that I have been shown a vision. Father Miller's message was light. The Advent people were traveling on a path toward a bright and holy city. This is not the first time the end of the world has been prophesied by a fool, nor will it be the last. If you do not renounce these radical ideas, you will not be welcome here in this house of worship. This was only the beginning of our journey. Her visions do not come from God. My friends, she speaks with great tenderness of the word of the Lord. The Holy Spirit encouraged our Advent hope. There were people who didn't listen and they fell off the path. Do you believe this doctrine which you preach? I was lost, and now I'm found. We must follow the word of God over the rule of men. We feel love. The love of Jesus. It lifts us up. It carries us forward. 
and it will guide us home. This movie is called The Hopeful, and it's only coming out for two days, April 17 and 18. So that would be what, Wednesday? Wednesday and Thursday, and it's only available in select places. I think Cottonwood is one place. Now I realize that we, there are some of you here who don't believe in, in watching movies. I'm not forcing you to watch this, but I do want you to be aware that there's gonna be people who are gonna be watching this, and maybe they will have questions. Or you can use this as a witnessing opportunity as well. Maybe invite someone or see someone. But I want you guys to be prepared because the world is going to see this. And maybe you're saying, well, shouldn't the world know us already? Maybe, but sometimes we give a, uh, a misconception, a warped picture of who Seventh-day Adventists are. And so I invite you to be able to, to be a good witness to, to whoever is going to come and ask you. But the most important thing is for us to be ready. Just like in that time, those people there are pioneers. They believed with all their hearts that Jesus would come in their lifetime. And it showed in how they lived life. And those of you say that you believe that Jesus is coming in your lifetime. And this is the end game here. Do you believe that you are exhibiting that? Do you have that belief that Jesus really is coming soon? Because that's going to affect how you live your life. And so there's no conspiracy theory. Jesus is coming, and I'm looking forward to being with him in heaven. And so I want to um, invite our praise team to come up, and we're going to sing our closing song, and it's called When We All Get to Heaven. Let's all stand. Sabbath, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bring a friend.